Hello and uh, thank you for watching this. Uh, whether you are from Ascension Church or St Michael's Church or you're just watching because you found it on YouTube or uh, on our website. Uh, this is a an important uh, video message. Uh, it, it comes with a letter so if you haven't got access to the letter it's, it's just a written copy of this message but um, if you want to have a copy of that as well then do get in touch uh, with um, either of the church offices and they can send you a copy. But uh, as I said, important message. We are in at the beginning of a new chapter in the life of both churches in this bar part of Bath, the southwest quarter of Bath. And um, it's been wonderful uh, celebrating Robert and Margaret and uh, giving them a good send off last weekend. But uh, you're now down to just sharing one vicar and uh, I don't know how you're feeling about that but uh, I imagine for some of you um, there is optimism and for others you're feeling a little anxious and so we just want to um, share some uh, plans with you that we have for how to um, go forwards. Now we have a level of uncertainty around the future you know we uh, have been using the phrase hopeful uncertainty because we don't know what the future holds but we do know the one who holds the future. I know a cheesy line but it's true we know the one who holds our world and our future and uh, God knows what's ahead and he actually is often wanting to invite us in to discover uh, his plans um, and to trust him and take his hand and that's what we want to do as churches. We want to uh, be those uh, people of God who are in step with his spirit. As we face the fresh challenges of global instability, cost of living crisis, the huge financial deficit that our diocese has, this big, big hole in their finances that they are trying to deal with, uh, we will need to respond and innovate and adapt as churches. We are both fairly fragile and small, smallish congregations, um, often a living by faith and I know that both of you churches have, have grown used to living by faith and I'm calling you into a fresh uh, chapter of living by faith I'm afraid uh, but that seems to be the way that Jesus tended to live as well and uh, and his disciples were encouraged to do the same. So for us here in this part of Bath uh, we believe there's a Kairos moment and uh, God is calling uh, St Michael's and Ascension to rediscover uh, a partnership together. Now that partnership was called the Marlbrook Team uh, Ministry established back in 1981 uh, with a prophetic vision for the churches to work together and uh, to see God's kingdom uh, built here in this part of Bath. And uh, over the last number of years that both churches have been fruitful and, and operating fairly independently uh, with a vicar each um, to, to lead them. But we are now in new territory. You only have one vicar and there's no guarantee that there will be another team vicar. We need to be honest about that. There is a, a financial crisis that the diocese are having to engage with and wrestle with. And that means that we've got to um, learn new ways of operating as churches, have new expectations of what, what the leader's role is. And so uh, we are asking uh, asking for fresh insight from, from the Lord. You might be wondering where the name Marl Brook comes from. It's actually a stream that runs through both parishes uh, and uh, you can't see it anymore, it's under the ground, but uh, we feel God is calling us to rediscover, recapture, renew that vision uh, of the Marl Brook team, to come together as churches under a common vision um, to see the river of life flow again through both parishes and uh, to bring our streams. God's been at work through both churches. I'm not saying it's he's not been flowing through the churches, uh, but uh, we believe that God is calling us to bring those streams together uh, so that they will flow as one river. And uh, we see this amazing picture of the river of life in Ezekiel 47 and again in Revelation chapter 22. And I encourage you to go and read that as you pray. There's a, a wonderful verse in uh, in Ezekiel 47 uh, verse 9 says so everything will live where the river goes it's a it's a picture of transformation and we believe that as the river flows we will see uh, we will see dead things come to life people's lives will be transformed 
So it's a vision of transformation and we um, are needing to be transformed ourselves often. God often starts with ourselves and then uses our stories and, and uses what he's doing through us to bless others and bring transformation to those around us. Now we're part of a deanery. We're part of a, uh, a deanery which is a collection of Anglican churches and we've been encouraged as a deanery to explore partnerships um, and so this is something we're, we're actively responding to um, as the deanery seeks to consolidate their resources um, we are looking um, at what partnership looks like now I know that you'll be remembering a conversation back uh, in the springtime, early summer, about a partnership with St Barnabas up the hill. And you might be wondering, what happened to that? <laughs> I haven't heard much about that since. Well, I'm afraid we had to press pause on that uh, when the curacy fell through here. And um, it, it may be something that we explore again. We're continuing conversations, but for now we've just pressed pause. And uh, I, for one, don't feel like I have the capacity to uh, lead three churches at the moment on my own. But uh, uh, it may be down the line that we are in a, in, a, in a stronger place to be able to explore wider partnerships and expanding the Marlborough team ministry. But for us to do that, we need to develop a new model and a new approach. We've also got to, uh, we've also got to bear in mind that we're, we're entering a winter that is going to be harder than uh, winters that we've had before. Um, we've already seen our, our cost of living uh, go up. Um, both as households but also as churches um, and there is going to be some government support I believe for uh, for churches as well as households but we're unsure as to exactly what that looks like and how much it's going to affect um, our bills uh, but even with that support we we are predicting that uh, it's going to be more expensive this year. Now I just wanted to help you understand because sometimes you just don't always know uh, how much these uh, buildings cost to run and heat and maybe you switch off at the APCM and you uh, have missed what uh, the figures actually represent but uh, taking last year's figures from both churches uh, you'll see that for, for Ascension the utility costs were £5,005 for St Michael's it cost uh, £7,928 to heat and uh, power our buildings and we have three buildings at St Michael's, whereas Ascension is all on one site. Um, so Ascension is, is a simpler model, uh, whereas St Michael's, uh, I thought it might be helpful for you to see the breakdown of costs for, for powering and heating each of those three buildings. And you'll see that by far um, the, the most costly building to heat and run, as you would expect, because it's big and it's old and it's uh, drafty, is the church. But... Uh, 52.8% of the utility costs go to, to heat one building. And so you, you would hope that we would get good value for money from that investment. And uh, I just want to demonstrate uh, with the rough, roughly about £4,000 a year uh, how much that building is used. And you'll see the proportion that we use in the next graph in the pie chart. And you'll see that uh, only, the church is only actually open on an average of 13 hours a month compared to 168 hours a month for Rose Cottage and 60 hours a month for the Lighthouse. So we're not actually using the building uh, that we are paying a lot of money to heat um, that much. And uh, in some ways, this is not a new challenge. We've always had that to deal with. Um, but uh, St Michael's PCC made a commitment last year to explore sustainable greener energy solutions for our buildings. And that is something we are continuing to, per to pursue and explore. But it's going to be a long process and uh, we're at the beginning stages. So we're not in a place to be able to have uh, affordable solutions in place right now. We so we've got to make some alternative decisions. Um, and is it responsible uh, to be using um, that much money to heat one building when there are those outside in the community who will be struggling and having to face the challenge of whether they heat or eat. Um, and uh, so we, we do want to be responding as a church to those in need and we want to be responsible, good stewards of the fin finance and resources that we have. One of the ways that we'd love to reach out and uh, serve our community is through offering perhaps a warm space with a hot meal 
during the week and uh, this is something we've not made any fixed plans for but uh, I'm just waiting to see what the need is and where it is and exactly how we might respond, best respond but we are going to need some investment we'll need some uh, investment of time and energy from volunteer teams as well as some financial support for those initiatives and so we need to make savings in order to have that finance and uh, so we've got to make some hard decisions and and we are, are are really seriously considering whether it is wise to continue um, spending money on heating a building that's open so little we also see that there's a need in ascensions parish and um, it's a bit different. Um, I'm sure there are those in need of uh, food and warm spaces, but we also see the growing population of young families and students. And as a church, um, you have had a great ministry over the years to young families and um, younger generations. But at the moment, that's been a struggle, hasn't it? And we know that um, there's, uh, there's feedback from the families that your current um, offering of worship is is difficult to access sometimes and so we w would like to see um, some new expressions of worship offered on a Sunday morning. We tried it in the afternoon with the family gathering and found that it was um, not always consistently um, well attended and so we um, want to consider something in the morning uh, but that's going to involve um, and require lots of energy, lots of new ideas, younger leaders, uh, teams to run things like children's work and um, and people with experience of, of leading contemporary worship. Now that is not currently um, a resource that you are, um, you are you have in abundance at the moment at Ascension. So we will need to look outside Ascension for that. Now after much prayer and discussion and careful consideration of various options, we believe that these two um, challenges of, of financial stewardship uh, of our buildings, as well as wanting to meet the needs of those in our communities, um, we believe that, that the, the solution that would best enable us as a team ministry uh, to both tackle those two things uh, is to have a period of togetherness to bring our congregations together on a Sunday, to, um, to meet together for worship in one building. And we believe that the best building for that would be Ascension's building. It's, it's the largest, it's the most cost effective to run, and it's the, the warmest, to be frank. It's, it's warmer when it gets cold. And so uh, we are proposing uh, an alternating pattern uh, where each church takes it in turns to lead the other in worship in their own house style. And uh, when St Michael's are leading, we will be running and providing children's work and hopefully youth work. There's a, um, there's, there's a new uh, youth work initiative that we're exploring. And so um, that will hopefully meet and help meet the need in your parish in Ascension of of reaching out and being accessible to young families and students, we hope. But by not heating our church building at St Michael's, um, we will hopefully save some money that will enable us to invest in some missional activities and continue to sustain the great uh, mission projects that we've got at the moment. Now, we're hoping that the missional communities will continue to operate and open their doors to those who are seeking Jesus and uh, and this will this will be an opportunity for those at Ascension if they want to have a taste and a explore of what a missional community is like, then then they'd be very welcome to join those too. Um, but uh, we want to make sure that uh, there is an offering of worship every Sunday, and we hope that this pattern uh, of uh, St Michael's leading on the first and the third Sundays and Ascension on the second and fourth Sundays will be helpful um, in building uh, and. Uh, and we will bind ourselves together relationally, we will bind together our resources and we'll build a common vision, we'll build a body uh, who are equipped for mission and uh, build a pattern of worship that I believe will be more sustainable in the long term. Uh, the plan is to eventually, when the winter uh, is ended, to, to go back to our buildings and to uh, break out 
uh, back into um, into our into our own buildings. But uh, I also believe that we'll be breaking out into new ground. We'll be uh, breaking out into new uh, ministries um, and uh, new partnerships may be forged as well. So um, there's all sorts of opportunities on the horizon. But there will be some hurdles and uh, here are a few hurdles uh, that you you might need to consider. But with every hurdle, I believe there's an opportunity. So the first hurdle is messaging. We want the message, particularly in Twerton, as the building is used less on a Sunday. Uh, we, we still want the message to be that the church is open, that uh, we are willing to sacrifice our right to worship in our building on a Sunday in order to serve the community. And the church is open, not closed. It's open through the Lighthouse Cafe. It's open through chaplaincy in the school. It's open through the food bank and, and help and practical ministries like that. But most importantly, it's open through the four amazing missional communities that are meeting across Twerton in different places at different times. This is an opportunity for all of us to uh, be more intentional, I believe. It's an opportunity to demonstrate that the church is open to demonstrate not through opening a building but through opening our hearts and our lives opening up our time and our capacity and our giving this is an opportunity for all of us where will you be able to use your gifts and time i wonder this winter the second hurdle which is also an opportunity, is accessibility. We know that there will be some who will struggle to get up the hill, both um, emotionally or physically. And so we want to be able to offer transport solutions to people. So if you have a car and that you would be open to giving someone a lift, could you let me know? Because we would love to ensure that everyone is able to get there to Ascension on a Sunday morning. And we want to coordinate that well. But there is an opportunity there because you not only get to bless someone, but you also get to uh, begin a, a relationship with someone that you get to know them. You get to have those conversations in the car on the journey there. The third obstacle uh, or hurdle, which is also an opportunity, is a culture of honour. This takes effort to honour one another. The, ra the fact is, is we've got two different cultures, two ways of doing things coming together. You may find it difficult seeing the other style of worship. You may find the diversity uh, of people difficult. You may find that certain people's behaviours are different to how you're used to. They may trigger you. You might find lots of children overwhelming. You might find lots of people that are older than you, difficult to engage with. These are difficulties and hurdles, but they're also opportunities. We have the opportunity to honour one another, to, to not just put up with or accommodate, but to honour, to love, to celebrate, just like Jesus did. It says in 1 Corinthians 12 that we are to give greater honour to those who are less honourable. Now that's not less honourable in God's eyes, that's People who are less honourable in the world's eyes, people who are seen as um, maybe vulnerable or people who are less presentable in the world's eyes. They're an opportunity, that's an opportunity for us to give greater honour, to, to do the opposite of what the world does and to celebrate them, to love them intentionally. And by doing so, our hearts are transformed, our hearts are softened and we become more like Jesus. And that's deeply attractive to those outside the church. Now, we understand you might have more questions. Uh, there may be other hurdles. My encouragement is for you to see those as opportunities. But if you would like to have your questions answered, we're running a Q&A on the 9th of October. That's this Sunday at Ascension during the service. And then on the 16th and the 30th of October at St Michael's. Um, and uh, we know that there will be lots of things that you want to process and if you want to talk to us personally, then feel free to get in touch with us and we'd be glad to talk to you. We're praying for you, praying for you as you deal with your own anxieties around this, uh, as you support others, 
And we're praying that you'd catch God's heart in it all. We're sending so much love um, and uh, thank you so much for pursuing Jesus um, and, uh, and laying down what might be your own preferences for the sake of the kingdom. See you soon, I hope.